What is going on, everybody? In today's video, we are going to be breaking down five running backs that I think you need to start drafting right away, regardless of format. These are players that are just really falling back in terms of ADP that I think have tremendous value. So if you guys do enjoy the video, if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe down below. All we do here is free fantasy football content, redraft, dynasty, and best ball all year long. If you're into that, subscribe, hit the like, and let's hop right into today's video. All right, if you guys have been following my drafts throughout the offseason this year, my underdog drafts, PPR mock drafts that we're doing with our subscribers, whatever it may be, you guys know that I am a massive fan of Derrick Henry moving into the 2024 season. Right now, his sleeper ADP is 27 overall, and on underdog, he's going right around pick 30. So this is a player sometimes that you will see fall back to the third round sometimes, and I think he's an incredible RB1 to pull off of the board. If you're going double hero running back, I think he's a great RB2 as well. But if you're going to start your draft with two wide receivers and then grab your RB1 and Derrick Henry, I think that is phenomenal. Last season, the Ravens had 541 rushing attempts, the most in the NFL. And some people are like worried about, well, Derrick Henry is just not going to see the volume. Like, Lamar Jackson is there, whatever, but Gus Edwards had 13 rushing touchdowns last year in this offense. Like, I, I don't really understand what we're missing here, and that was with Lamar Jackson having five rushing touchdowns, Justice Hill having three rushing touchdowns, and Keaton Mitchell having two rushing touchdowns. So I'm not worried about this whatsoever. I think Derrick Henry is a lock for double-digit rushing touchdowns. Maybe he doesn't get the initial rushing volume you could argue but overall they signed Derrick Henry for a reason he's going to be a large part of this offense and he was still a great running back last season he was the RB8 in full PPR I don't get what we're missing here I think he's just a tremendous value he needs to be added to your draft boards he needs to be a player that a lot of you guys out there are drafting a lot more aggressively I do think his ADP has a chance of moving up slightly as we move into the months of August and September. So right now, I think he's a tremendous value. Get him on your draft boards. All right, next up on the list, I've got David Montgomery of the Detroit Lions going at an ADP of 65.8 on sleeper and 75.3 on underdog. And I mean, listen, guys, I, I'm all for Jameer Gibbs. I, I understand Gibbs is kind of the upside selection in this offense is going to get more of the receiving work those things that we like to see in full ppr leagues i think gibbs is perfectly fine at his current adp but i think monty is just really being overlooked a lot of people talk about gibbs like taking over that backfield the second half of the season and if we just look at weeks 10 moving forward right week 10 a big game for jameer gibbs okay 26.2 fantasy points week 11 a big Game for Jameer Gibbs, 21 and a half fantasy points. In those same games, 17.6 fantasy points for David Montgomery and 17.8 fantasy points for David Montgomery. And then we look at the back half of the season. Like a lot of people talk about the end of the fantasy season, Jameer Gibbs just taking over in weeks 15 through 17. Double digits for David Montgomery every single game. Uh, 10 fantasy points, 14.9 fantasy points, 12 and a half fantasy points through the fantasy playoffs and overall in games that David Montgomery played last year double digit fantasy points in every single game except for week six against Tampa Bay so Monty obviously heavily utilized last year I, I just don't see how even if Gibbs gets the bulk of the carries bulk of the touches gets the receiving work I don't see how David Montgomery is just going to be completely exiled from this offense you know there's not really any names on this roster behind Montgomery that pop out is taking over those touches so I just think he's a tremendous value and the Lions ran the football the seventh most of any team last year with 500 rushing attempts I don't think this offense is going to change that much this year I don't think the philosophy Dan Campbell anything's going to change and Monty is still going to get a lot of goal line work regardless you know even with Gibbs having 10 rushing touchdowns one receiving touchdown last year Monty still had 13 rushing touchdowns in this offense. So I think this offense is still going to continue to run the football quite a bit. I think Monty is going to be heavily utilized. And right now, I think his ADP is an absolute steal. If you guys are new to underdog fantasy, this is the time to start drafting your underdog teams. Okay. First place, best ball mania. Someone is going to win over a million dollars. And these drafts are only going to continue to get more 
and more competitive as we get closer to the month of August. And if you cannot wait to start drafting, you don't have to. I conduct plenty of live streams for you guys where you guys can hop into underdog drafts with me, get round by round advice, and see how I draft teams round by round. Don't forget, promo code DCATCH, link is down below. You get a first time 50% deposit match up to $250 on Underdog Fantasy plus a free mystery pick'em. Start drafting right away before these drafts get a little bit more competitive. All right, next up on the list is a player I have talked about a ton throughout the offseason. I talked about a lot, you know, last offseason and I got a lot of hate for it. And I'm still getting, you know, a lot of heat for liking DeAndre Swift going into this fantasy season. But hear me out here. His sleeper ADP is 67.6. His underdog ADP is 92.4. And I get it, okay? He, he's going from the Eagles to the Bears, whatever, okay? The Bears still ran the football the second most in the NFL last year. And then the argument comes up, well, now they have Caleb Williams. Now they have Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze, you know, DJ Moore's still here, Cole Komet, and Gerald Everett are there. Better offensive line than last year. But, like, all those things, for me, I, I think help. DeAndre Swift, because DeAndre Swift is not necessarily a running back who has to be a workhorse running back who has to get all those touches. He can be a receiving running back and a rookie quarterback who's going to be throwing the football more is going to be dumping the football off to a running back of DeAndre Swift's caliber. So I get it. You know, you got some Roshan Johnson believers, uh, Khalil Herbert believers. If you want to go with those guys at the end of your draft, fine. If you want to get shares of them in your underdog drafts, I, I think that's fine. But I just think DeAndre Swift, who a lot of the times in your builds, whether it's a best ball build or it's a redraft mock that you guys are doing, he can be your RB3. And I just think that's a tremendous value. Or if you're kind of going zero running back, uh, hero running back, whatever it may be, he can be your RB2. And once again, I just think that is a really, really good value. Plus, you know, if this offense is going to truly improve under Caleb Williams in his rookie season, they will be in the red zone more. Okay. And, and I just think DeAndre Swift is going to get lots of goal line work, be utilized as they get closer to the red zone and just get a lot of those dump off passes. And if it wasn't really for, you know, the Eagles implementing the tush push so much as the season went on last year, Swift would have had a much better season. He was still a top 20 back last year. And when you look at weeks one, through weeks eight, he had seven double-digit fantasy performances. And past that, he had two additional double-digit fantasy performances. And then he only missed the 10-point mark, double-digit point mark, uh, in three additional games. So overall, still a very productive season for DeAndre Swift last year. And I'm okay with him in this Bears offense. I'm not worried about, like, I get it. Some people are like, well, DeAndre Swift gets injured. Well, everyone gets injured. Every running back gets injured. And last year was his healthiest season that we've seen so far in the NFL. The Bears offensive line is better than it was last year. This offense is going to be better overall. And DeAndre Swift is a good value running back, especially in full PPR formats. I say go ahead and take a chance on it. All right, next up, we've got Raheem Mostert on sleeper going at an ADP of 83.2 on underdog going at an ADP of 95.1. Okay, this one is kind of similar to the David Montgomery situation, right? I get the Devon A. Chain thing, okay? I get that he's the value pick, the upside pick. He's the kind of Dolphins running back going off the board earlier in drafts. I was very high on Devon A. Chain last year once he got drafted to the Dolphins. I had him above other rookie running backs like Zach Charbonnet and Kendra Miller in rankings. I, I was all for A-Chain, but you still have to admit that he is a injury-prone running back, and he is also a very small running back, right? But that's not even what I care about. I, I just think that Raheem Mostert, like, is, people are just completely, like, denying that he's going to be part of this offense next year because he's 32 years old, and Think about this. Raheem Mostert had 21 total touchdowns last year, 18 rushing touchdowns. Okay. It was an RB5 in full PPR. And I, I just overall, I, I'm like, I don't really see any logical way that Raheem Mostert is just completely out of this offense, right? And he doesn't have to be a top five running back, especially based on his current ADP. And when you look at the Dolphins offense last year, they scored the second most points in the NFL with 496 total points. So even if this offense regresses a bit, they are still in line to be a top 10 offense that scores 400 plus 
total points, and that leaves a lot of touchdowns for Raheem Mostert, Devon A. Shane, Terry Kill, Jalen Waddle. However you want to look at it, this offense is going to score points. Raheem Mostert, I, like I said, I, I just don't see him being completely exiled from this offense, similar to David Montgomery. And I, I know people like rookie running back Jalen Wright. I get it. There's going to be other options, whatever. But Mostert, coming off of the season he had last year, I just don't see any logical way that you know the head coaches, offensive coordinators are just going to take him out of the game plan and put everything on a running back like Devon A. Shane with his injury history or a rookie running back like Jalen Wright. Mostert especially, I think is going to be utilized towards the goal line and probably vulture a lot of touchdowns from those other two running backs that I just mentioned. So Mostert, a great value. Start drafting him. I mean, similar to DeAndre Swift, this is a running back you can take off the board as your RB3 or 4 sometimes. He's just a tremendous value. Start paying attention to him. All right, last but not least, a little dark horse running back action here, which feels kind of weird to say about a player like Austin Eckler, who's been such a high caliber player uh, in the last three years, not really last year, but 2021, the RB2, 2022, the RB1, then last year, the RB26. Okay, got injured in week one after having 26.4 fantasy points against the Miami Dolphins and you know, admittedly a, a game that had a lot of offensive points scored by both teams. Then he missed weeks two through five and it was a really up and down season for Austin Eckler. I 100% get that, but he only played in 14 games, okay? And he still had over a thousand yards from scrimmage and six total touchdowns. And when you break things down, okay, he had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if we're including week one, double digit fantasy performances. So out of 14 games he played, and half of them, over half of them, he still scored double-digit fantasy points in full PPR. So now he's going to the Washington Commanders, and I like Brian Robinson. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Brian Robinson, I still think, is a good value, a player you should be targeting, getting shares of as well. But Austin Eckler, I think, is the upside pick, and he comes at a cheaper cost. Like, there's more risk involved here. If you want to look at it that way, I think that's fine. But I think there's more upside involved with Austin Eckler as well. And Brian Robinson... I'll mention again, I think being really, really, um, you know, just overlooked as well. But Eckler is the guy, you know, going at an ADP of 129.8 on underdog and an ADP of 95.2 on sleeper. I think right now, I mean, this is a running back. Once again, you can take as an RB4, sometimes an RB5. I mean, I have plenty of underdog drafts where I've been able to take Eckler as an RB5. And I feel really good about that just because. Once again, there's a lot of upside involved here. Okay, this is going to be a new offense, a Cliff Kingsbury offense. This is the type of running back that I think really fits the mold. And I, once again, Robinson's going to get his touches, but this is a completely revamped offense, right? you got Jaden Daniels at quarterback, Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson's here. We've got a new tight end in Ben Sennett, and I just think Eckler is going to be heavily involved. And once again, plenty of double-digit performances last year, still over 1,000 yards from scrimmage still at least six touchdowns and i just think people are completely writing him off when in the past three years he's been one of the most productive fantasy football running backs i get it running backs and wide receivers both can have very very steep and drastic fall offs in fantasy and in real life but i think eckler's got a little bit left in the tank being overlooked and just a really tremendous value based on adp at the moment all right, there you have it, five running backs that I think you need to start drafting right away in any style of drafts, whether it's mock drafts or underdog drafts. So if you guys did enjoy the video today, be sure to subscribe. This is all we do here all year long, free fantasy football content, redraft, dynasty, and best ball. Be sure to join our next live stream, whether we are doing a full PPR mock draft, which we have been doing all off season with our subscriber base, or one of my underdog drafts where I will show you how I draft an underdog team round by round. And with that, I will say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you saw it here on the cast.